So, we're given that the differential of cos x with respect to x is minus sine x, and we've got to show that if we differentiate sec x with respect to x, it's equal to sec x tan x. Now to do this, let's just start by writing down differentiate with respect to x sec x. Now, what is sec x? Well, it's got to have something to do with cos x, I would have thought, because that's what they've given us, and sec x we know is 1 over cos x. So this is the same as differentiating with respect to x 1 over cos x. So just write that in there. Now, to differentiate something like this, we've got a fraction, but the top isn't a function of x. So it's a bit pointless using the quotient rule. No, no, what I'm going to do is rewrite this as cos x all to the power minus 1. So we can differentiate with respect to x cos x all to the power minus 1. Notice I've used square brackets here, alright? So to differentiate this, I've got to use the chain rule. I've got to think of this like, uh, let's just come over here. I've got to think of this as, say, y equals cos x to the minus 1. But in place of cos x, I'm going to let t equal the cos x. So in other words, I've got y equals t to the minus 1. And by using the chain rule, I can find out what dy by dx is. Because dy by dx is dy by dt multiplied by dt by dx. It's as if these t's cancel out and leaving me with dy over dx. So this is the chain rule used so often in differentiation. So worthwhile remembering that. So when it comes to differentiating this, let's just put it over here. Think of this then as t to the minus 1. So when we come to dy by dt, it's going to be minus t to the minus 2. But t is cos x, so we can write minus cos x all to the power minus 2. So that's dy by dt, all right? And we now need to do dt by dx. So if we differentiate t with respect to x, this is where this comes in, differentiate cos x with respect to x, we get minus sine x. So put that in brackets there, minus sine x. Now, the minus, the minus, that can be a plus, so we can forget about that. And cos x to the minus 2, well, that's 1 over cos squared x. So if we were to split that up, we could write this then as just 1 over cos x, and then the other 1 over cos x, we could couple it with the sine x and write sine x over cos x. And 1 over cos x is sec x. And sine x over cos x is tan x. And that's what we had to show. Alright.